So first and foremost, well, hello and welcome everyone to AutoCAD 3D Architectural Modeling Webinar. This is brought to you by TopCon Solution Stores. I am your host, Joshua Hickey. I would like to start by acknowledging how precious everyone's time is right now, and I am sincerely thankful that all of you have joined us for today for this presentation. I assure you all this will be time well spent. At TopCon Solutions, we hear the questions from many of our CAD users, how do I add 3D to my 2D drawings? Is it possible or do we need a different software? So to answer that question, I have created this presentation to show you the power of AutoCAD in 3D and how to use the additional Z access. About me, so for my background, I worked production for over 13 years across several different industries, including the RV industry, orthopedics, electrical, and fiber optics. During my journey, I've held positions from a design tech to a design department supervisor. Now I'm a technical specialist with TopCon, helping with software instructions such as AutoCAD, Map 3D, and Civil 3D. About us, who is TopCon? TopCon Solutions is a retail arm of the TopCon Positioning Systems, the world leader in construction layout, machine automation, and land surveying products. Along with selling the complete portfolio of TopCon products, TopCon Solutions is a platinum tier and award-winning Autodesk value-added reseller, a platinum level blue beam partner, and we have certified instructors, instructors on staff. We have retail stores and service locations in the Pacific Northwest, the Midwest, and throughout the Northeast. We have 13 brick and mortar locations spread out amongst those regions. We offer state-of-the-art training with certified instructors currently offering online training and some in-person training, along with unparalleled technical support and service just a phone call away and at our brick and mortar locations to keep your software, hardware, and equipment humming right along. Today, we're actually gonna end up doing a two bay car garage. We're gonna be doing framing, uh, drywall, rafters, and the uh, decking of it. We're gonna kind of go through, we're gonna position elevations around the plane view. Uh, we're gonna rotate objects in a 3D environment. We're gonna go ahead and extrude the framing, the decking, the rafters, and the drywall. We're also gonna create and manipulate what I call sub-assemblies and assemblies in the 3D environment. And there's some best practices that's gonna be, I'm gonna be pointing out along the way as well. With that being said, we're gonna go ahead and pop up AutoCAD and we're gonna get started on this practice. So I did do some prep work on this AutoCAD drawing beforehand, just to kind of save some time. Uh, what I end up doing is I remove the text, the dimensions, and stuff like that as well, just because we don't really need it when it comes to 3D modeling. I did go ahead and I had I placed the plywood in there. You can see that with the yellow outlines. You can see with the gray outlines, that's the drywall. I went ahead and laid the sheets out this way, so that was done as well. One thing to always keep in mind when it comes to doing 3D models in AutoCAD, you can't really extrude just line work. It has to be a polygon. So another thing that I did is I went through and all the uh, framing, the plywood, the drywall, so on and so forth. I went ahead and already made those into polygons already. So I didn't have to sit here and do a bunch of clicks and picks while you guys are sitting here watching me do it. With that being said, we're gonna go ahead and start with the 3D model. Now, one good practice, and I, I do, I tend to do this quite a bit, is I actually leave the original alone, and I go ahead and I just make a copy. And then I like to copy it kind of off to the side, and I, I do it in known distance. And the reason that is, if you happen to mess up on something and you, you need a copy of the original, just remember the distance, and you can just copy from the original over to where you're working at. So let's just do uh, 200 feet. And I'll just kind of remember that in case I mess up during the presentation or during the 3D model. So as you can tell, we have an east, a north, a west, and a south wall. We do have our uh, visualizations of it, our elevation views of it. I'm going to go ahead and delete these just because, I mean, they're nice, they look good and everything, but I don't need them for 3D. The other thing I also want to note is I, I did put everything on its own layers. You can notice I have a drywall layer. 
I have a plywood layer and I have a walls exterior layer. So you'll kind of see me toggling those on and off. Another thing that you're going to be noticing is I'm going to be using the view tab a lot. And it's going to be primarily the name views. And you're going to see me toggle between top, left, right, sometimes front. So kind of keep that in mind and definitely get used to using this when it comes to 3D modeling. The other tab up here is the 3D tools. And the main one we're going to be using today is going to be this extrude right here. Uh, if you happen not to have it on your AutoCAD, all you have to do is come over here and right click, show tabs, and just make sure that the 3D tools is actually checked. With that being said, we're going to go ahead and start 3D modeling. So the first thing that I'm going to focus on is I'm going to end up shutting off my drywall and my plywood. And we're going to go ahead and extrude the framing. So I just did this as standard two by four. So when it comes to these side walls, I'm going to end up extruding those three and a half inches. So then you can either come up here and click extrude or you can type in extrude. Either or it's going to end up bringing up the extrude command. And since all four of these walls are going to be extruded the same distance. I'm going to go ahead and select all four at the same time. That's why so I, I only have to do one command and get everything extruded back. All I did is I went ahead and selected. I'm going to hit enter and it's going to ask me for a distance. So I'm just going to type in 3.5. So one thing you're going to notice is when I extrude it, it's no longer on the proper layer. It went to a different layer. And the reason that is, is because I was on the A walls layer when I extruded. So one thing to kind of keep in mind is when you go to extrude, you want to make sure that over here on the home tab in your layers that you actually have the right layer that you want it to stay on active. It's not a big deal if you happen not to. All you have to do is just select everything and then you can go ahead and switch it to the layer that it needs to be on. So I went ahead and selected. I'm going to drop down, put it right there. So another good practice that I like to do is when it comes to manipulating 3D models, if you look at it, when I extruded this, each stud is its own piece. So when you're trying to select everything and rotate it, it's going to be easy to kind of miss something in there. So what I like to do is I like to put these in blocks and I, I like to call it sub assemblies is what we're doing right now. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to initiate the block command. You can just type in block. I'm going to hit enter. And then I'm just going to come up with a simple, easy, straightforward naming convention. So we'll call this framing dash. And I'm gonna go ahead and copy this this way so I don't have to keep typing that for the next couple of blocks we're gonna do. So then the next easiest, or easiest naming convention is we'll call this the east. The east wall, let's call it east. I hit enter, we're gonna go ahead and select the objects. So I'm gonna go ahead and window, hit enter again. Click OK. It's going to ask for a base point. It's, it's not really important where you pick it at. I, I like picking just a corner or something along that line, something easy that's attached to the part. And as you can see that everything's connected within the block now. It's, it's what I call sub-assembly. We're going to go ahead and repeat that for the next three walls. So let's go ahead and call this north. I'm going to go ahead and select a base point. I'm going to do this for the west. Going to select a base point, and then south is going to be the last one. At that point, now we have our walls there. Everything's one piece as far as each sub assembly. Now we're going to go ahead and move on to the drywall and the uh, I guess you could say the decking of the walls. Let's go ahead and shut off the wall exterior. I'm gonna turn on the plywood. So when I drew this up to design, I just made the decking five eighths of an inch along with the drywall, just to kind of make things simple and easy. As you can see, I have the decking right here and I have it for all four walls and I even have it for the rafter up here. I already have the windows cut out, the door cut out. I even have the decking for the roof up here as well. At this point, I'm going to enter the extrude command. You can either type in ext for extrude, or you can come up with the 3D tools, and it's right there. I'm going to go ahead and select all the decking. It's 
going to ask me for an extrusion. As you can tell, I stayed on the wrong layer again, so it's going to put it on the wrong layer. So I'm going to type in 0.625. Now I'll just have to come in and just select everything and put it on its proper layer. There we go. So the one thing you're going to notice is sometimes it'll actually extrude the windows as well. It's not a big deal. You can select them. You can delete them. The other way to do it is you can type in subtract. And then you're going to select the object right here. And then you'll window and sub or select the object that you want to subtract. And then at that point, if I come in and delete it, there you go. Now, like with the framing, we're going to go ahead and put these in a subassembly as well. We're going to use the block command, and we're going to go ahead and just kind of combine everything together per wall. So I type in block. We'll call this uh, plywood. Dash. And I'm going to go ahead and copy this, kind of like what I did with the framing, so I don't have to keep retyping that. And we'll start with the east wall. Going to go ahead and window. Enter, enter, and just put a base point. Go ahead and paste that in there. We'll call this one north. Going to select all the decking. Enter, enter, base point. West. Enter, enter, base point. Enter, enter, base point. I'm going to go ahead and do the rafters as well. This is going to be the decking at the end walls of the rafters. So we'll go ahead and do that, name that rafter. Now we can go ahead and do the roof as well. We'll go ahead and make that into its own sub assembly. We'll call this uh, roof. It's nice and simple. I'm only going to do one side because we're going to end up having to ro rotate this to match the pitch of the roof. And I'm just going to end up using the mirror command to go ahead and put it on the other side when we go to place it. So that concludes as far as us doing the sub assemblies for the decking. I'm going to go ahead and shut off the plywood layer. We're going to turn on the drywall layer. And we're going to repeat this process for the sub assemblies for the drywall. I'm going to go ahead and type type in extrude. And actually, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to put it on its right layer so you can kind of see how it's supposed to be if you end up doing this up here. So we'll go into the extrude. We're going to grab all the drywall. I'm going to hit enter. And we're going to make this 5 eighths of an inch for 0.625. You notice that when it extruded, it actually put it on its right layer because I end up putting it or started with it being on the right layer to start off with. And much like with the decking, this one happened to pop in the windows. You can just select them, delete them, and you're good to go. So we're going to end up making these into their sub-assemblies as well. I'm going to end up calling this a block. We'll call this drywall dash. I'm going to copy it just like the other stuff. We'll label this one east. Enter, enter, base point. Label this one north. There we go. Label this one west. And we're going to go ahead and do the south one. Now that we have completed all of our sub assemblies, it's time to combine the sub assemblies and make them into what I call just one assembly. At this point, we're going to go ahead and turn on the decking and we're going to turn on the uh, framing. And I'm going to use the orbit command. All you have to do is type in orbit. And at this point, it's kind of like pan, but in a 3D environment. So you can kind of pan around, kind of look around. And you're going to see me using this command quite a bit. So one thing to always keep in mind is when you do an extrusion, it's actually going to end up putting it at the zero level of whatever axis you're extruding. And if you're extruding in the Y axis, it's going to put it at the zero level. X axis, Z axis, it's going to be at the zero level. 
And as you can see right here, the bottom face of the drywall and of the decking and of the framing is all on the zero level. So we're gonna to have to go through and stack these. It's not a huge deal, it's a simple move command. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm gonna grab the decking on each assembly that I'm working with. And I can't forget this one up here. I actually forgot to extrude that, that rafter. So it's, it's not a huge deal. We'll go ahead and do that here in a minute. I'm just going to type in the move command. And I remember that it's a, it's a thickness of 0.625. So I'm just going to move it 0.625. Next, I'm going to grab the drywall. And since we want this on the top face of the wood, I'm going to go ahead and move this up the thickness of the wood. So it's going to move up 3.5 inches. Now, when you take a closer look, you can tell how the stack, how everything stacked correctly. You got the decking right here, you got the wood sitting on top, and you got the drywall sitting on top there. I'm going to go ahead and shut off the plywood layer. I'm going to go ahead and extrude this rafter right here. Let's go ahead and make sure that we are on the correct layer. I'm just going to go ahead and window and select all the polygons for this rafter. I might as well just go ahead and do this rafter as well. So I'm just going to type in EXT for extrude. And we'll just do this uh, one and a half inches. That sounds good to me. You can kind of see how that extruded right there. Let's go ahead and turn the decking back on. And as you can tell, when I moved the plywood on these other pieces, it actually placed it on the faces of that as well. Next thing we're going, going to do is we're actually going to start rotating these walls up in the vertical position. Same thing with the rafters and everything. Now, I'm going to end up using the block command. I'm going to make these sub assemblies and make all the walls one piece for each or one assembly for each wall just to make it so when I'm rotating and manipulating them, everything's gonna stay in sync with each other. We're gonna come up here to the view. I'm gonna come back to the top. That's way so I can kind of see in this view. We're gonna go ahead and go into the block command and we will call this, uh, let's call it a, a wall assembly. That sounds good to me. Like with the other stuff, I'm gonna go ahead and copy so I don't have to repeat. We'll call this east. Going to end up combining those into one assembly. It doesn't really matter where you pick the base point, just make sure you pick it on the assembly. It just makes it a little bit easier to manipulate. Going to go ahead and repeat the block command. We'll call this one north. Going to go ahead and just put a base point right there. Got the west assembly. Got the south assembly. Now we're going to go ahead and make this an assembly too as well. Let's go ahead and do that as a block. We'll call this rafter end. We'll go ahead and call this rafter middle. At this point, everything's one piece or every piece of this uh, garage is in, actually assembled into an assembly as a one piece. We're going to go ahead and start rotating the walls up. So one thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to end up moving this up north a little bit. And the reason I'm doing that is when I'm looking at the right view, I'm actually going to have all this line work that's going to be in the way of this. And I don't want to mess with anything over here. So I'm going to go ahead and move it and we'll move it up. Uh, let's go. 300 foot. This way, so it's kind of out here in the middle of nowhere. Nothing's going to be in the way when I'm looking at it from the side. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come here. We're going to go to the right view. Right here is my two rafters and my north wall. I'm going to go ahead and rotate these 90 degrees. I have my south wall right here. I'm going to go ahead and rotate this negative 90 because I want to rotate it counter or clockwise. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the front view. 
And here's my west wall. I'm going to go ahead and rotate that negative 90 so I can rotate it up. Last but not least, I'm going to rotate the east wall 90, de 90 degrees. And at that point, when we go to orbit, you're going to kind of see how everything's starting to fall into place. You got our two sets of rafters, you got a roof decking, you got all four walls sitting right there. We're ready to start placing it on the floor plan right there. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to come over here and go to my foundation layer. I'm going to go ahead and extrude this foundation down. We're just for intents and purposes, I'm only going to do two foot. So let's go ahead and extrude. And as you notice, I can drag it up, I can bring it down. And uh, you can also type in a distance. I'm going to go ahead because I want it to be in negative Z. I'm going to drag it down and do two foot. You're going to notice that it went, it went into the negative Z because I drug it down. At this point, I'm going to go ahead and just kind of reference the green uh, floor plan outline on top of the uh, foundation to start placing the walls. I'm going to go ahead and kind of move this one back a little bit just so I can kind of see what I'm doing here. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and place the first wall and it's going to be the east wall. I'm going to kind of come over here and the corner that I want to actually focus on is this back corner right there. So I'm going to go ahead and all I'm going, going to do is I'm just going to select the wall assembly and this is where it comes in nice having everything as a block. I can select it and I know everything's there. I'm going to go ahead and type in the move command going to select this back corner and at that point I'm going to place that right there. And as you can tell it's covering the floor plan everything's looking good right there. We're going to go back into the orbit command. I'm going to rotate around we're going to place a north wall at this point. So north wall I know that this back corner of the framing is going to match that corner of the framing so I'm just going to select the wall. I'm going to type in move going to select the endpoint. I'm going to snap it to the endpoint right here. And you can shut off your ortho if you want to. It's kind of hard to kind of see what you're doing. For example, right there, I can't quite see. So I'm just going to type in F8 to snap it off so I can kind of free move it. At this point, I'm going to go ahead and find that endpoint. As you can tell, the drywall looks like it's lining up. Same thing with the decking on the outside. Everything's looking good so far. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to grab this wall. And I know this corner right here is going to match that corner right here. So I'm just going to snap it in point to end point. Last but not least is this wall. I know that that corner right there is going to end up snapping to this corner right here. So I'm just going to go ahead and select it. We're going to go into the move command. I'm going to snap from this back corner up to that corner right there. And now all of our walls are placed there. You can kind of rotate around and I'm using the orbit command again. It just makes it a little bit easier and kind of rotate around, make sure everything looks good and look at the corners. Everything's looking good in the corners. So to me, I, I feel like this model's set and ready to go. Last but not least, we need to set the rafters. So let's go ahead and set them. So I know that this corner right here it's going to end up setting on that corner right there. So I went ahead and did an orbit and I moved it to where I could actually see that back there. I'm just going to go ahead and select that assembly. I'm going to type in move. I'm going to grab that corner right there and I'm just going to move it and snap it to that corner right there. And at any time, you know, you, you play something, you kind of want to take a look, you can go back into the orbit command. Kind of move it around, take a closer look. Everything looks good. The decking's nice and flush. That corner's looking pretty good right there. I think we're good to go as far as that. Now we do also need one of these on this back side right here. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to come to the move command or the uh, view tab. Sorry about that. I'm going to come to the top view. I'm going to go ahead and grab that assembly and I'm just going to mirror it over on the back side. So I'm just going to type in mirror. Make sure that I have my ortho on so it's nice and straight. 
I don't want to delete the, the original object or the source object. I just want to go ahead and mirror it. I'm going to hit enter. Now we have it where the decking's on the back side. Now I'm just going to kind of repeat it as far as what I did with the other rafter. I'm going to kind of rotate and orbit until I can see that back corner. I'm going to type in move. I'm going to go ahead and snap the endpoint of that right there to the endpoint of that right there. Just like the other one, I'm going to kind of do an orbit. Make sure that the decking and everything looks good. Looks good right there. Everything looks good right there. You can see the decking back there. It's snapping right there. And you can also change different ways of how this renders as well. That's one thing that I do want to point out. If you come up here, you have custom view, you have shaded with sides. So you have a bunch of different options. You can do 2D wireframe, kind of what you think it would be. It's a lot of lines. It's kind of hard to see stuff. You can do conceptual, which kind of gives it a conceptual look. I usually design either in this one or in the shaded. You could also do hidden. So it's kind of like the line work, but it keeps the lines hidden. You also have a couple different options. You have realistic and stuff like that. I think I was doing it in realistic when uh, I was doing this as well. You do have shaded. You also have a couple different options that you can kind of go through. I usually stick with the realistic, the shaded, or the conceptual just because it kind of makes it easier to see things. So going back to the to the uh, 3D modeling, we got to go ahead and place this rafter and actually set them up and start copying them. I'm going to go ahead and orbit. I'm going to go ahead and just place this. We're going to go ahead and snap from that edge. And I'm just going to snap it to the one that's already placed there. There we go. And I'm just going to start copying it. And I'm just going to do 16 inches on center. It sounds good to me. So the, the first one I'm going to do is I'm just going to move it 16. I'm going to start copying. Let's go. 16, 32, 48, 64, 80, 96. Get a couple of them there. I'm going to go ahead and orbit a little bit so I can make sure that I'm selecting the stuff that I want. At this point, I got a stack of them there. I'm just going to go ahead and copy. I'm going to start copying these until we get a little close to the end. Looks like we're getting there. So I'm just going to finish copying the rest. 16, 32, 48. That looks good right there. We have all of our rafters there. You can kind of come in and do a little bit of orbit. Looks like we got everything lined up pretty good. Last but not least, what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to rotate this decking up here and place it on top. So I'm going to go ahead and move this up a little bit this way so it's not actually going to be behind the house. I'm going to come to the front view. Right there's my decking. And I'm actually going to end up rotating this and referencing the pitch of the roof. That's why so when I do the rotate, I know that it's going to be the right degree. So I'm going to go ahead and select it, type in rotate. I'm going to come up to the pitch or the peak. I'm going to go ahead and rotate it. And I'm going to have to shut off my ortho so I can go down at an angle. We're going to go ahead and just snap it just like that. And now our decking is the same angle as our roof. At this point, we're just going to come into orbit one last time. I know that this bottom corner is going to have to snap on the end uh, rafter. So I'm going to grab that and we're going to snap it right here on this corner. And there's our decking right there. Last but not least, I'm just going to come to the top view and mirror that over just to finish that top decking. A little bit on the difficult side to kind of see where that peak is right there. It's going to be right there. And there you go. You got a nice little gap up there for a ridge cap for your venting when it comes to doing the fascia and all that stuff. So that completes the actual 3D of the uh, garage. At this point, if you want to, you could. Uh, Shut off the drywall. You can shut off the plywood and just take a look at the framing. 
you can go ahead and come up here. You can also do uh, shaded with edges, kind of change the view of it if you want to. You can change the hidden if you want to, which to me kind of looks neat. But at that point, you have completed your 3D model of the garage. Uh, so at this point, if there's any questions or anything like that, go ahead and feel free to ask them. If you do have any questions, feel free to insert those into the questions pane on your GoToWebinar con control panel or in the chat as well. We'll give a few minutes here to see if anyone has any questions, but thank you so much, Josh, for that presentation. That was awesome. Oh, you're very welcome. Okay, so it does appear that we are getting some questions coming in. So we have a question here, Josh, that says, could you overlay a civil base on a surface and position this building to a finished floor and view the whole project in 3D? In theory, yes, you can. Uh, it wouldn't be the best route of doing it. This, usually when you use 3D and AutoCAD, it is primarily to check the fit and finish. Not so much being able to actually use it as an accurate base uh, as far as the 3D modeling. I mean, I, I guess if you're just looking for like a rendering or something of that sort, it would be all right. But if you're looking for accuracy and stuff like that, I would say not so much. Okay, great. And thank you very much for that question. We have another question here um, and a comment saying nicely done. <laughs> um, well, thank you with the question stating can you incorporate surfaces uh, as far as civil 3d surfaces and stuff you technically can um, most of the time usually when it comes to doing that a lot of uh, companies and stuff use revit to incorporate the surfaces and kind of bring those both together and like i said earlier that that's primarily for the accuracy and the construction side of things if you're just doing this primarily just for looks and fit and finish and kind of a render, you theoretically can. So it's kind of based on what aspect are you kind of looking at this for, so. Okay, great. Thank you for that question there. Uh, moving on to another one. Could you do a quick run through of dimensions in the 3D model space on the X, Y axis? I'm not exactly sure 100% what exactly they're asking for. Are they asking for dimensioning in a 3D environment or? So hopefully we can get a little bit more information on that question or that ask. So I'll wait to hear back from that individual um, and hopefully they can respond there. But moving on to the next question here, can you view the model from inside the garage? Uh, there is a way of doing it. You would have to place a camera in there and then end up making it a name view. And at that point, yes, you can in theory look from inside the garage. Uh, that kind of gets into a little bit more detail and a little bit more of the complex side of 3D modeling. Okay, now here we go. On to the next question. Does AutoCAD 3D allow you to extrude along a path? Yes, it does. And I can actually show you that real quick if uh, you want me to. The, can you guys see my AutoCAD again? Yes. Okay, so I'm just gonna come up to, uh, let's do the top view again. I'm just gonna do a simple circle. Let's make it kind of big. Uh, I want to make sure that I'm away from my model. That's why when I come into the side view, I don't have to worry about trying to stare through the garage. Let's go to the right view. And so right here is that circle that I placed. I am going to just draw in a spline. I'm just going to kind of snap it and we'll just make it a little bit on the weird side. There we go. 
It's kind of interesting how it picked it up like that, but it's not going to be a huge deal. So if I do extrude, I'm going to go ahead and grab that. At that point, it does give you a path option. So if I just select that, and I, apparently I made it a little bit too complex. So let's make it a little bit simpler. Come back to the right view again. Not make it so so obvious. There we go. And technically the spline doesn't even have to be connected to the circle. You can actually reference it throughout here as well. Let's go ahead and select it. Select path. There you go. And that's how you do it with the pathway. Thank you very much, Josh. We have another question here. Um, let me see. Is there a way to add a texture to the side of the garage like brick? Yes, there, there is a rendering library or rendering material library when it comes to AutoCAD. Uh, when you're in there just modeling and you apply a render to it or a, a material to it, we'll kind of have a rough looking render as far as the visualization of it sometimes it's grainy and stuff uh, but when you actually jump into the rendering command and actually re-render it realistically it actually looks pretty sharp so long story short yes there is a way to apply materials to it okay great and thank you for these questions everyone please feel free to keep them coming if you have additional questions um, let's see we have one here that says can you adjust the perspective of the ortho view so things further away look smaller and the 3D model looks like you would see in real life? Uh, that goes back to, so you, you can actually place camera views and camera angles uh, within AutoCAD. So it kind of refers back to that whole uh, placing the camera po portion of it. It gets a little bit more into the details and the, and the more, I guess you could say, complicated parts of the 3D modeling realm of AutoCAD. Another thing that you can do with uh, within AutoCAD using the cameras is you can actually do a fly view where in essence you could place a camera, set a pathway through a house and actually have it set up that way as well. Awesome. And we do have a question here stating, will this give you a material breakdown? Um, straight out of it how it is right now no it won't uh if you was to actually go in and set up parts or set up you know uh each piece as a two by four by eight foot and had it like that in essence you could keep track of how many pieces are of that but you're going to end up having i'd say about 20 to 30 different layers just based off of each part that you're using so I mean, to, to be honest, a lot of the reason why I've always used 3D modeling wasn't so much to kind of keep track of parts. It was more or less just make sure that fit and finish and everything looked good. You know, when I put it together, does everything fit there? Um, when I was in the RV industry, I used to do the whole prototype of a uh, travel trailer in 3D just to make sure that all the cabinets I designed, the plumbing, the walls and interior walls and everything, just made sure everything lined up. So. And that that's the biggest thing that I've used it for. I know some other people have done 3D models to put material on it and do rendering as well. But those are the, the two main reasons why a lot of people do 3D modeling in AutoCAD. Awesome. Well, thank you everyone for those questions. I don't see any additional questions coming in here. So I think we're able to give you a little bit time back here today. But if you do have any questions, I know that Josh has a slide up here where you can go ahead and contact him personally, as well as we have that support line at topconsolutions.com, that email, I should say. We also have our general email for any other additional inquiries you might have with regards to training or any products 
specifically, that's our email right there, info at topconsolutions.com. So I would just like to reiterate that you are all invited to our upcoming webinars. If you are interested in attending any of those, you can reference that information on our website at topconsolutions.com. If you haven't already, maybe take a look at the chat to see those additional links that I had distributed for all of you to reference. But with that being said, I think that's the end of our presentation. So thank you again, Josh. Wanted to pop on here to wish everyone a great rest of your day. And um, we look forward to seeing you on the next presentation, the next webinar. Sounds thank good. you so thank much, you. Josh. You're very welcome. Thank you for attending this webinar.